right. Go ahead now. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, I am Wolfstar. I am the guild leader of Dragon's Nest Thievery Company. Uh, today we are running a trading uh, masterclass. Uh, my, the guild has uh, gotten a guild trader, and I wanted to help people learn how to you know, learn how to price things better, learn what kinds of things to sell, uh, just get more knowledgeable about what the economy is as a whole. Uh, I used to, before I took over DNTC, I was actually co-lead of Savage Blade, which are located in Vivek. You know, and I helped build them up from when we were a very small guild out in the wild up to where they are now. So I've got a lot of experience uh, in in doing this. So the first things I think that people should be aware of is that traders are incredibly expensive. Uh, running a trade guild is a business and traders are won on a blind bid system. Now over the last few years the economy has grown and so subsequently so has everyone's bids. But like I said it's a blind bid so you don't know how much anybody else is bidding against you. While the player in the guild base has increased, the number of traders available haven't really kept pace with that, which makes for a lot of fierce competition. Uh, the prime spots and faction capitals can go for tens of millions of gold, and even spots in less ideal locations, like um, outlaw refuges or even the ones out in the wild just next to uh, a way shrine, will still cost a guild hundreds of thousands of gold. So if you're in a guild that is that has a trader, you really want to do your best to try to help. Um, you want to do your best to try to help make as much gold for your guild as possible if a trader is important to you. That's why traders now, also have uh, fees and dues and stuff to keep up with uh, their bids and stuff. Yeah. Um, the important, uh, like the big trading guilds where they focus on. Uh, trade PVE there are a number of PVE and social guilds that also have traders DNTC is one of them uh, Kitty Rainbow Dash is another and while uh, their focus isn't on trading they most likely will not have uh, dues now I'm gonna post a couple of add-ons in the um, in the trading 101 channel uh, to help that people commonly use to help them price their items. The first is called Master Merchant. That one, right, that add on is based off the guild, the number of sales that your guilds make. And it only looks at your guilds. So it's useful if you want to know whether an item is selling and where it's selling for. There are different uh, settings that you have to take into account when you do that. But it doesn't necessarily, it's limited to only your guilds and you can only be in five guilds. But if not all of them have traders, then of course the number of uh, sales that it shows you and therefore like the clearer picture that you have of an item, how much an item will sell for, it won't, uh, it won't really reflect what an item will actually go for. Uh, Master Merchant is also a very resource intensive add-on there are lighter ones such as Diom's Data Daedra that people like to use, but if you're really into trading or crafting or anything like that, unfortunately, there are other add-ons such as Britworthy, Furniture Shopping List, Tiny Dogs Crafting Calculator. Those are all dependent on Master Merchant. Hmm. The other add-on that, that people like to use <laughs> Yeah, it's the only reason why I still use that one because, like I said, it's very resource intensive. Uh, the other add-on people like to use is called Tamriel Trade Center. That one, it's kind of useful too. It will show you everything across the server, not just your guild. Unfortunately, but, it doesn't but show... But just the NA server, right? Or is it both NA and EU? Or just... NA, just right? the server that you're actually on. So if you're on okay. NA, it's going to pull only NA data. Just for clarification. Yeah. yeah. 
unfortunately, it shows listings rather than sales. And it's not very useful um, because sometimes you, it'll show like five listings of the same item that one person listed once because it all, they also have a website. Tamriel Trade Center has a website that a lot of people use to search for items. And so it will show up, you know, it'll show up everything that is listed and it'll show it multiple times. And it will possibly show items that are no longer available, but it's still showing on the website. So well, you can do a lot of hunting around for items as well. Well, that's also why it's good to have both of them. So you can kind of use both figures to make an educated guess and, you know, instead of just relying on one or the other, like, it's kind of better to have both. Yeah. Um, but again, it shows listings, and just because an item is listed at a certain value doesn't mean it will sell for that amount. A lot of people like to use their gold slots, their trader slots, as another bank. And so if somebody listed a green recipe, like a winter rose tea, which can actually sell for about a thousand gold because it's not that common, they might list that for 500,000 because nobody will buy it for that. And so they know that recipe will stay safe because they don't have room in the bank. But when they do that, that will also show up on TTC. So like Mika was saying, you want to try to, it's best to use both uh, add-ons, but if you can only use one personally, I would prefer just to use Master Merchant it's because it will only show sales. Yeah, it's a little bit more reliable in that case. There's also another one that's uh, it's like ATT or something like that. It's like Activari's Trade something. I, I haven't used it personally, but there's options that you can get it for. We won't talk about that, though, since we don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit more in depth about Master Merchant, because that is what I use. Uh, there are multiple settings within Master Merchant. It will show you not only, well, you can set it to show within your inventory, like how much an item would sell for on the guild store, rather than, you know, the vendor price that it will normally show, like blue, um, blue recipes it will normally be listed as 10 because that's all you can get from a vendor but if you change one of the settings within master merchant it will tell you how much you can sell that for on the uh, on a guild store within that column um, you can also set it so that way you can see like how far back you want to pull sales history uh, you, you can set it to, like, a lot of people will set it for maybe 30 days. I think that's actually the default, to scan back 30 days. You can scan, have it set to scan back 60 days or even just two weeks. Would that be under uh, can, uh, scan, scan frequency? Or? Yeah. You can also have it show you a graph of sales from your guilds on any given item which you will see when you hover over that item, or even if you click on it, if it's linked in chat. That's really useful because it will show you, one, all the sales that occurred within whatever time frame, but also two, where they, are, where they happened. But that part is only useful if you color code your guilds. You have to assign your guilds all a different color within the social settings, so that way on the graph, they all look different. Because how much I can sell an item for in Vivex is more than I might be able to sell it for in Oridon at Skywatch. But if I have all of my guilds, the chats all look the same color, then I don't know when I look at that graph where the sales occurred. Um, the main, the most important thing to remember about Master Merchant though, is it does require upkeep. It will keep all of your sales from all of your guilds going back into basically perpetuity. And that's a problem because as you get more and more sales in your history, 
it will impact game performance. So not only is it going to take longer for you to log in, or longer for you to zone or go anywhere, it will cause you to DC more often. And also, at the end of the day, I don't need to know how much this green recipe sold for six months ago. That doesn't tell me anything. Because you know what? Six months ago, it might have been selling for considerably less than it sells for now. But Master Merchant That's why you want shows you an average. Often. Yeah, it will show you an average of what the prices are over that history. And that average could be quite a bit lower than what it sells for currently. So you will have to go into um, Master Merchant. Uh, the GUI is, by default, it opens up when you uh, open your mail and you will see that there's a button on there that says reset I reset my uh, master merchant once every about three weeks whenever I get to a uh, hundred thousand in sales not me personally in sales but my guild making a hundred thousand sales because one that is when I notice uh, a performance impact and two like I said I don't need to know how much something was selling for a while ago so you hit reset and you just you gotta wait for it to purge all of the old data it will go back only 10 days every time you reset and that will give you the most current pricing on any item of course this means that if an item didn't sell within the last 10 days you no longer have a price on how much it's worth is it possible to reset it so where it goes back to like 15 or 20 days instead of 10? Or is it when you reset it, it automatically does 10? As far as I'm aware, it automatically does 10. I didn't see any setting within the screenshots you sent me um, that would indicate you'd be able to change it. However, it's not a big deal if you don't have a price on anything because you know what? If you're in multiple guilds, or even if you're just in one, your guildmates might be in other guilds as well. So all you gotta do when you wanna, when you're not sure how much something is worth, just ask for a price check within guild chat. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, it's kind of imperative that you price appropriately. If you price too low, your guild loses out on taxes. It, and it also you drives also the lose prices. Out on money too. Yeah, I'm getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll let you talk. So if you price too low, your guild loses out on taxes. It also drives the price down for everyone, and this, in the long term, shoots you in the foot because you now have to keep undercutting everybody else in order to sell it quickly, which means you do wind up losing gold as well. Now when you go to list an item within a guild store, you know, there's a listing fee, there's a housing, um, the house commission fee, um, and then there's sales tax, it says. Um, the listing fee is 1%. The, the tax and the commission fee are 7% combined. However, the guild doesn't see 7% back on that. They only see 3.5% from those taxes. Which means, because the other 3.5% it just disappears from the game because the traders are first and foremost intended by Zoss as a guild sink, a gold sink, which helps keep inflation in check. Now, if you list something for too low, like if you list a recipe for 27 gold, how much gold do you think the guild got in return? Nothing. So if you just keep doing that, you might be making a little bit of gold. If you list a recipe for 27, you might see 20 gold back. Guild didn't make anything off of that. You barely made anything off of that. It wasn't really worth your time, I would think. And the taxes would be under the house cut, right? Is that what it <laughs> says on there? Because I know it gets divided in yeah. two. When the item sell, yeah, there's the listing fee. And Which is 1%. Yes. And then there's the house cut. It says when the item sa sells, 7% of the sales cut. The sales yeah. price is kept by the uh, guild store. If the item does yeah, not sell, so, you are not charged this fee. Yeah, so 7% all gets taken <laughs> out, but the guild only receives half of that in return. The other half just disappears entirely. Uh, using Master Merchant is most effective in stronger trade guilds. 
And they'll be located in cities like Vivek or the faction capitals. Or um, Skywatch isn't a bad location either. But it, they're not going to be that useful for guilds like out in the wild or in a refuge. Or um, if there's somewhere like. I'm trying to remember what other places there are that aren't worth a lot. But anyway, it's not that helpful because those are typically. Uh, not that helpful for those smaller guilds because they're typically feeder guilds. Uh, and so people will price very low to try to draw people that use TTC out to their guild and then uh, be able to sell and undercut everyone else that way. <sighs> so now uh, we're going to talk about how to get things to sell. And there are a variety of sources you can use to do that. Uh, a common and easy way to do it, I suppose, would be to farm dungeons, trials, and delves. You can get motifs and gear from them. Uh, you, you can get Briarheart from Rothgar, Spriggans from Bankerai, yeah, uh, Dragonguard from Eastmarch. Oh. Actually, I have a. Also, I have... also Mother or uh, Mother Sorrow goes for some good money too sometimes. I I got an example that I want to show, if I can find it. Yeah, Pep says Necro isn't that bad either. A lot of uh, sorcerers use it because the pets. Yeah. I was just giving some mm -hmm. examples. Let me. Yeah. I need to post these two. So look at how much a Briarheart, a green Briarheart. Uh, ring might go for just from running around the zone and you pick up a green ring and it will go for maybe around 3k a purple one could go for as much as 80 90k close to 100 I have a blue one I don't know why that one didn't post hang on So if you, and there, okay, so the blue one is worth about 15 to 20k. And you can get that just from running around the zone. And that's an easy thing to pick up. It didn't require a whole lot of effort for you, from you, aside from maybe questing. And so that's an easy, that's a popular set to sell, first of all. You can also farm certain delves for rune box pieces. The assembled pieces will go for more. Uh, the assembled rune box will go for more than the individual pieces sold separately because you never know what what piece somebody is looking for. But maybe they're willing to buy the whole part, well, the is. whole uh, rune box. It's public Instead dungeons, I think, pieces. not delves that you get those at, right? Um, both Somerset delves will give you different rune box pieces. One of them will give a Sigix, um globe, I think it was. The other will be a kitten, <clears throat> an, like an actual yeah. pet. We done kitten runs, <laughs> <laughs> just to get those pieces. In Vardenfell. I think there are two of them as well. One will give you a costume, and the other, I think, is a bell memento. Yeah, it's uh, the it's the six health robe, and then the other ones. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but yeah. Yeah, and then Merkmeyer. You can do Merkmeyer dailies to get the pieces for the swamp jelly pet. And that's another thing you can do. You can run dailies. Uh, daily quests in Somerset uh, give you Kulanda Lacquer, which is worth quite a lot, actually. Uh, let me post that. Uh, 
that you can you can turn around and resell that for between 2500 and 3k a piece you can get hat queen plumage from running i don't think you get the plumage the the style trait itself from running dailies in Merkmire, but you can get bright throat gear which if your crafting passive is high enough you can decon it for that mat otherwise you can just sell the gear itself yeah, and, and some motifs go for pretty high and like you said you can do the dailies and get the lacquer and you can also get the motifs some motifs are like 2k some are 13k you know it, it also depends on like if it's new or if there's a holiday nearby and you know such uh, different events and such like that i think the prices differ during the time of uh year and stuff so you can uh strategically like save them and stuff and and sell them like you know kind of like how people do with stocks yeah I don't seem to have those specific motifs screenshot but if you run the Somerset dailies you can also get the CPR motifs which like Miko was saying depending on which piece it actually is it's gonna be worth anywhere from 2 to like 20k I think for the CPRs if you're doing Sigil quests and um, farming in Artam and harvesting doing you can get the um, the Sigic motifs and then you can also get I don't know so Elder Argonian just dropped but what whatever the dead water I think is the one from Markmire you can get those as well from doing the um, Markmire dailies Yeah, these rune boxes right here that I'm showing, this one can go for like 2.7, uh, 1.8, and these are just the single pieces and there's seven of them, so like you can sell them individually or put them together, and it's, it's, it, it depends on the rune box exactly. Some of them, like if you sell the pieces individually, you can make more money than selling the rune box, but then there's other ones which you can make more money selling the rune box versus selling them individually. It all depends on which one. Yeah, I think the ones that are either have been out longer, or if it's the holiday one, like the Apple Bobby and Cauldron, mm -hmm. if you, you're going to want to sell those as a whole rather than separately, just because they are so common. Uh, another thing you can do is to thieve. I love thieving make a lot of gold off of that not only from fencing items but sometimes you get valuable motifs and blueprints depending on where you're thieving which you can then turn around and you can clean and resell those if you're thieving in Eleanor in Somerset you will get Eleanor blueprints you will get um, yeah I mean you'll get Eleanor blueprints <laughs> which, you can fish in uh, Morrowind too Dude, I've got an yeah. agenda. I'm not getting there oh. yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stop getting ahead of me. <laughs> if you thieve in Vardenfell, you have a chance to get Boyant Armature or any of the great houses like Radorn, Halalu, and Telvani. The blueprints and the motifs. So that's another good location to go. Personally, the library in Vivek City is a really good, easy spot, easy respawn spot to farm. And Eleanor, you'll, in Somerset, you'll want to primarily do Eleanor City. But it'll, I think the Eleanor blueprints also drop in Artaeum. I can't remember. Most common, of course, it'll be the green, um, for Eleanor at least. The green blueprints will be most common. They don't they don't sell for as much as they used to, but you might get lucky. You'll get something purple and something blue, and those have held the value better, going between at minimum 5k for an item like the um, 
shrine, the Eleanor window shrine, to pro hundreds of thousands for something that's purple, like a, the verdant bench. You can harvest mats if you're not really into doing a lot of group content. If you don't want to, uh, if you want to try to avoid interacting with other parts of the game because you know enemies and all that, uh, go and harvest mats. A popular good location is actually to go to Craglorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the zone is a group, is a group area, unfortunately, but you don't have to go in the group zone, in the group parts of the zone to go farming. You can easily avoid that, picking up all kinds of mats. And the reason why I suggest Craglorn is because you have the potential to also get Nern, which you can see is worth about between 8 and 10k right now. Potent Nern which is used on weapons. Uh, you can also get fortified Nern, which is considerably more common, and so it's not worth as much, unless you want to use it to craft research uh, gear for yourself or for others. So picking up all of your mats as you go along is another good way. And we can talk about the difference between whether it's better to sell raw mats or if you want to refine it for your tempers later. If your provisioning is high enough, you can sell, or you can craft food and sell that. But you have to be conscious, um, conscientious of what kind of food you're crafting. It's, um, people aren't really looking to buy something like melon pork radish noodles or whatever it's called. I mean, it's a blue food and it's, I think that one might actually be CP150. Uh, but nothing that's lower level and typically nothing that's blue uh, is something that people are willing to buy. They will buy, however, uh, let me pull those up. They'll buy longfin pasty. Or, um, this is what I use mostly. Here, here. Or Dubious Camoran, which is uh, a limited time recipe. It only drops during the. Uh, I can't remember if it was a New Life recipe or if it's um, a Witch's Festival. I thought I also had. Ah, uh, there it is. There's a lot of uh, builds and stuff that, like, you know, Alcast, he uses this on a lot of the builds, but you don't have to use it. You can pretty much use whatever the, whatever you want. Um, you can also, if you happen to know the recipe, craft and sell Clockwork Citrus Filet. As you can see, just one item, just one of those foods will go for almost 3k. Pev says uh, oh. the dubious drops during the Jester's Festival. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Dubious doesn't go for a whole lot, neither does Longfin, but they are cheaper alternatives to more elite, I guess, food like this citrus filet. And part of what makes this uh, citrus filet so expensive is I believe it requires perfect row. Mm -hmm. I, I don't recall. Okay, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> um, or tam takeaway is also another popular food because that is also some a, a recipe that's difficult to get. But I don't know that one, and I haven't seen anyone sell that recently. Uh, if you don't, if you can't craft food because your provisioning isn't high enough, you can also craft and upgrade sets. Um, there's a number of crafted sets that are still popular, particularly for beginners, such as Hundings or Julianos, uh, Torx, um, I think Nightmother's 
Is it Gaze? Night Mother's yeah. Gaze is the Craftable. The Night Mother's Embrace yeah. is the Overland. Night Mother's Gaze falls in and out of favor periodically. So, I mean, you can sell it for an okay price at uh, at white, but you'll get more if you improve it to a purple or gold. You can craft jewelry if you're really into it. But that's expensive, so I would not go for that. I thought I had some. <laughs> oh, yeah, here's um. Uh... Yeah, I thought I had some. Oh, I have necropotence. We were talking about necropotence earlier. You can sell. If you pick that up in a dungeon and then upgrade it to gold, look at how much you can sell it for like 50k. Just the freaking gloves. Of course, that's with a try enchantment. So let me find something else. So if you have the try enchantment, the uh, value of it goes up, right? Yeah, because the try enchantment costs a freaking crap ton to make. Alright, so. Oh, I did not do that well at all. <laughs> the, huh, uh, yeah, this screenshot is messed up. Okay, it's supposed to be the lightning staff. And it's, uh, even on green, the Cropitan's lightning staff is still worth about 25k. And you can always upgrade it to make it worth more. Exactly. And upgrading's not that expensive. Or free if you just uh, refine the mats and you can get the tuckers from there. Yeah, if you're, um, if it's high enough, if yeah. your crafting passives are high enough, it's cheap, it's a cheap upgrade and it will pay off quite a bit. You can also craft furniture. Um, I mean, some of the more recent furniture styles are still going for, can still go for a lot. Because, I mean, Eleanor, most of Eleanor furniture requires Kulanda and um, what is the other? Uh, jewelry platings, which drives yeah. up the price. Merkmeyer furniture goes for a lot still. I mean, it's a new DLC. I believe some Vardenfell furniture can go for a lot, at least if it's purple. Dwarven, because of how rare Dwarven frames are, and there's a lot that's required to go into crafting any Dwarven furniture, sells for a lot as well. But aside from that, I find furniture crafting to be a bit of a gamble, so I myself don't do it. I only craft pretty much just for myself, unless somebody asks for a specific item. You... If you're well versed in alchemy, you can craft pots. The the two that I just linked, um, essence of spell power and essence of weapon power, are when, the when it most says common ones. When it says one thirty seven, that's per pot, not per stack, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So one thirty seven times two hundred is what? Actually, it would be one thirty eight because master. The guild thing will round up. So you're looking at over 25k just for a stack of spell power pots. Somebody will pay that mm -hmm. because they need it. Either because they do a lot of end game content like vet dungeons or trials, or they just like to use it all the time, test out their to do parses and stuff like that. Uh, spell power is for Magicka builds. Weapon power is for stamina builds. Mm -hmm. It's as you can see, it, it doesn't sell quite as well, but that's all right. It still goes for a lot. And then you can get the tripods through the health, magic, and stamina ones. Yeah, I don't know how well those sell in comparison because I don't make them. I don't use them. Mm -hmm. Um, says per each one, it's one hundred three. So. Okay, so it's comparable. Uh, Master Ritz 
if you happen okay first of all the way to get master rates is by um, you have to obtain 50 in whatever craft it is and then if it's provisioning you also have to be able to craft gold up to gold uh, uh, recipes and you want to know a, a number of purple and gold recipes because the more recipes that you know the more often a provisioning rent will drop um, the same similar goes for if you're whoops that wasn't the right we can put passives in to make an extra servants so that'll make you more money too yeah I just didn't I wasn't looking for that particular yeah. I, I thought I had, um, I have Master Ritz on here somewhere. I wanted to show those. But the same goes for clothing and blacksmithing. You gotta hit 50 and you have to know full motifs. Not like individual motif pages, but full motifs. And the more of those you know, uh, the more uh, likely it is to drop. I know somewhere around 35 to 40 motifs. There are currently full motifs. There are currently almost 70 in the game right now. So I get them to drop uh, pretty often when I actually do my writs. Uh, I don't sell any of them because of how some of them don't sell for a whole lot, such as these enchanting writs. Well, the first one doesn't sell for a whole lot. The second one is actually pretty good for an enchanting writ. They don't normally go for that much. I... Oh, here. I have a clothing writ. There we go. Yeah, every time I ended up getting a motif, I ended up selling it because I would have rather had the money. But I kind of regret that in a way. Because, <laughs> you know. People will buy Master Rits because they want the vouchers, because they will use the vouchers to buy something else with them. Either they're going to buy storage coffers for themselves, or they're going to buy like the motifs or research scrolls or other items available from Rolis and his assistant. Well, this writ is 14k. Well, there's only one side. If you look at the Clothier writ, you only get five vouchers, and because it's a two-trait set, I think that's how much Ash and Grip is, and it's a reinforced trait, it doesn't cost a whole lot to make, and so therefore people are only going to sell it for 2,500 tops. Yeah, it's one of the basic uh, traits. Yeah. And then, oh, here they are. And then I have blacksmithing roots. That top one is worth a lot. Well, it also has 144 rip vouchers, so. Yeah, but look at why it's worth 144 rip vouchers. Oh, uh, Nernhorn. And, and also legendary. Style. Yeah, that too. There's a lot that goes in that you have to factor into how much you're going to sell the the writ for and that is one of the reasons not necessarily how many vouchers it goes for although the vouchers does dictate I mean so the requirements like the fact that it's going to be a belt and it's going to be heavy and it's going to be legendary that does factor into the vouchers but you also have to consider like how much it's going to cost somebody to make it on top of how much you just sold it for 25k for 144 rate voucher is actually really good it's a pretty good price if you want to buy it but most common what would drop for people is something like this six voucher writ. because yeah silken ring is not a common style but clever alchemist doesn't cost a whole lot I mean it's a small doesn't require a whole lot of known traits. 
It's probably been one of the either four or six straight ones then. Yeah. Decisive is also not uh, a trait that's used very often in weapons. But if you have no interest in buying anything from a list, then yeah, you can sell your master writs. Um, and another good uh, of uh, money making tip is save your money instead of spending it on a bunch of junk. <laughs> <laughs> it's not money making though. Yeah. It's money saving. Money saving it. Yeah. Uh, you can, if you already have the gold to spare, you can resell luxury furniture. Buy something that looks good from uh, Xano in Cold Harbor every weekend. Hold on to that for a month or so because the price will go up. Yeah. Like you pay Depending on how popular the whatever. item is. Yeah. Depending on how popular it is, either the price will stay or it will go up and then it might go up a lot or only a little bit. Will it ever go down? Would they, you have that risk of it going down? Typically, no. Although I have seen items that sold on Guild Store for less than what they originally sold for. But, as it turns out, because I was a little confused about this too, usually it's a case of either people don't have the space anymore for that item, or they might have used that item for a specific build, because there are a lot of like housing contests different guilds put on. J Heart Ellis is in a few guilds that he streams those housing contests. And if people no longer need that item, and they're, they don't plan on using it again from somewhere else, uh, for something else, then they'll go ahead and resell it, and they'll sell it for below just to get it out of the way, and at least they get some gold back. It's like but that's all not businesses typically a sell risk. overstock because they need to get out of their warehouse. <laughs> uh, I had mentioned Rolis earlier, the writ voucher guy in the Master Writs. Um, a lot of people, like I mentioned, do Master Writs either for themselves or for others, and what I meant by that is they will buy crafting stations. They will buy tunable stations. Where's and the merchant so I can go to it? Ooh. Well, there's one in Grotwood. It's the one in Grotwood's uh, close to uh, where uh, you drop off, uh, where the quartermaster is, right? Close to, yep. Yeah. Mastercraft Mediator, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, there. It's where you would sell. It's your regular rate drop off. Yeah. But you know, I'm just gonna go to it real quick so I can open up the thing and they can see it. But you okay. Can, you can continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, you can get, oh, let me, where, you can get regular crafting stations from there, you can get dummies, you can get tunable crafting stations, and you can see how much they go for. The regular stations are going to be between 25 and 30k, the tunables, well, you can sell those, you can resell those for 25 to 30k. The tunables are going to be upwards of 150 towards 200k per station. Some guild halls uh, have all of the stations, and so they spent either a lot of they spent a lot of gold on either the stations themselves or on master writs to buy them with vouchers. You can also get furniture. Mm -hmm. um, and let me. Yeah, the trading guild I'm in it has every single set that's in the game in one of their trading in one of their houses. Every single set. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and they keep adding more sets, so eventually you're gonna run out of room in those guilds. In those guild homes, I should say. 
you can get um, the ebony motif. It's the only place to get it. People will buy either the pages or the book itself, and then resell that. Yeah, the pages and are Night 25, Thomas. and the book is 300. The book is actually the cheaper thing to buy because it's like 50 vouchers less if you wait and buy the book. You also get Night Pumice, which is the style mat to craft in ebony. And as you can see, that's worth a thousand gold just for one little piece. And it's actually been holding at that. I crafted somebody a set in ebony over the summer, and it cost about that much then, too. I had furniture, but uh, where is... I can't seem to find it in my screenshots. Uh, Rillis occasionally cleans out his furniture offerings, the furniture motifs, because those are the only place they're going to get gold motifs. So right now he has a bunch of Alinor stuff, but previously he had Vardenfell furniture up there. So there's a poison maker's cabinet. And there's the uh, the masterwork Telvani um, uh, candles. There's also the masterwork Halalu um, bathtub. Those, I believe, have been moved over to his assistant's um, offerings. can also buy research scrolls. Not only to shorten your own research, but you can sell that to other people. And they go for, it looks like 2600 pretty consistently. Where do you get these again? The research scrolls yeah. can be bought from Rolis. It's not that bad too, it's just three three vouchers. Oh, there it is. I was looking for that earlier. Cabinet Poison Maker. Um, I won this on one of our raffles. <laughs> <laughs> his assistant sells the blueprint now, but as you can see, people can sell the cabinet itself. They can still make a lot of gold off of that because, I mean, obviously it costs a lot to make, because, but also it's not an available, not as freely available because as soon as it goes to his assistant, the price, the voucher price goes up. So it might have used to cost like a hundred vouchers to buy before, but now it's going to be something like 125. You can also buy furnishing documents from either of them, and they will have random uh, Halalu, usually. Halalu or, you know, the other more when the um, blueprints will be in there, which then can be resold on uh, Guild Traders. PvPers can actually make a lot of gold if they're interested. Because if they're PvPing a lot, they get a lot of AP. And if they're getting AP, they can actually use that to buy... Uh, they can buy gear from the golden vendor, like gold necklaces, which they can increase. They can buy the militant coordinator. You, you cut out real quick. Can you repeat that? The whole thing? No, PvP? Ju no, just like the last, like, four seconds. Uh, PvPers can use AP to buy gold gear, gold, like gold necklaces from the golden vendor. Also, militant ordinator motifs, uh, the style mats for all of, for militant ordinator, and then also all of the factions, um, different PvP sets, uh, spell strategist is, I think, I think that one can be bought. I know it comes in, uh, rewards for the worthy. Uh, uh, where? I, I had an example. 
No, I don't know what it's called, so I'm not going to post it yet. So that's how a lot of PvPers make their gold. Because they use their AP to then turn that and resell it to other people. And as Miko mentioned earlier, you can fish. Fishing is very tedious. Um, it's more fun to do it with at least one person, usually. Yeah, plus you have a, if you do it with other people, you have more uh, a higher chance to get the uh, uh, rare fish that you can use to for your achievements. If you're into that. Yeah. Otherwise, um, the thing that you're going to primarily be selling is stacks of raw fish. Which, apparently, I don't have a screenshot of. But other stuff that can be uh, fished up... Oh, that's not how you spell it. Pyandonian bottles? Oh, yeah. yeah. And waterlogged satchels. Those only drop in Artam and Somerset. Come on, kitty. But you, they have a chance to have the Sijika motifs in them or other items, which is why, as you can see, they go for over 3k each. Or you could open it yourself and lose out on that gold and be disappointed by what you got. Because <laughs> I totally have done that as well. <laughs> but if you get something that's good, like one of the motifs, you can usually resell that if you decide to open it. Instead of just sell the satchel or the bottle themselves, you can usually resell that for more than what you would have sold uh, the satchel in the first place. Plus you can uh, use the bottles as raffle prizes and it'll be like a second surprise, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like giving lotto tickets for a gift. <laughs> Now, we talked a lot about crafting and how you can use crafting to make your gold, but it depends on your passives. So, let's see for provisioning. Mm -hmm. I have it pulled up. The most important passives you're going to need is obviously the quality. You want to be able to craft up to gold recipes, mm -hmm. which in turn means you can also craft up to CP160 recipes. Ah, 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 my cat just jumped from my bed on my shoulder. And then you also want to max out the chef and the brewer uh, passives. Those will allow you to make multiple at a time. Which will save you mats in the long Especially if you're making something like the citrus filet. Or if you're making, hey, citric ambrosia. Because both of those require perfect row. And that is an expensive mat if you're buying it. And I'd rather get three, fish. Thin, three, three items using one perfect row than just one item using one perfect row. So, yeah, get three extra. So yeah. you get a total of either oh. four drinks or four food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the price of one. So the passives are definitely worth it. Definitely. Yeah. You, even if you're not in it for the money, and, well, whether you are or not, it's still, you know. Yeah, it, like, whether you're trying to resell the items or if it's just for yourself, because you're struggling, you can do that. Um, and that's another thing that fish is good for. You're going to want to sell it as a raw not filleted because people will fillet it themselves in the hopes of getting perfect row because a stack of fish is going to cost less than one single perfect row. What other chemistry? So alchemy. You'll want to, if you're into crafting uh, any kind of potions, you want to make sure you cra um, you max out chemistry. Well, this way you can craft whether it's whether you're crafting a potion or a poison. You're going to craft either 
four potions or 12. Well, it says 12, but I think yeah. it's actually more like... Yeah, three, anyway. three extra potions or 12 extra poisons per crafting attempt. Yeah, but I feel like I make more yeah. than t 12 or even 13 every time I make a poison. And you but also anyway. want to get the laboratory used so you can uh, use three regions so that will make the potions more powerful, thus also making it more expensive. Oh, yes, um, which is how you make the spell power yep. and the weapon power uh, pots, because if you remember, he gave you three, um, there are like three, was it passives or perks or whatever that it gave you? And that is from using three different reagents. And again, that's useful either for yourself or you're going to sell it. If you are, oh, enchanting. Let me put that on there. So, aspect improvement. This is whether you're using Ta, Merkura, uh, even up to Kuda, which is the gold one. And then potency improvement allows you to, to, to ugh, determine what kind of potion, I mean, not potion, L level. Yeah. Uh, it's important to max those out because I had uh, one of the enchanting writs that I showed earlier, the 40 voucher writ, it was for, what was it, a, a prismatic, I think it was, and that is, yeah, superb, truly superb glyph of prismatic onslaught, and that is using, I believe it's Hakejo, which is an expensive, you can, that's something else that PvPers can do. They can buy Hikejo, which sells for like 10 to 11k on guild traders. Or if you're lucky, you can just farm the sewers and hope that it drops. Yeah, of course I don't have any of those. <laughs> yeah, craft cost for that 40 voucher rate is about 13k, most of which is that one single group, the Hakejo. But I think it was also a legendary rune, so, I mean a legendary glyph, so you got Kuda, which is worth like 2k on top of that. For jewelry extraction, especially with how stupid jewelry crafting is currently, you will want to make sure you have this passive. Because the more that you refine or the more that you decon, the greater your chances of getting different upgrade grains. You can sell some of those, especially if you happen to get something like chromium, which goes for... Let's see, what do I have? The grain goes for about 7 to 8k, and then if you get 10 of those, you can sell the plating, which goes for about 75k or more, 75 to 80k. Yeah. And it's all because you had jewelry extraction and you're able to get more upgrading grains. But then you also have the regular, um, you know, what, I think I'm missing another, oh, there it is. You have those similar in extraction skills that I had mentioned for the jewelry. You'll need to max those out as well. Because the more that you refine, and this goes into what I was talking earlier about selling raw um, raw mats versus refined mats, you can sell a stack of raw, um, let's say, rubidite ore. You can sell a whole stack of that for something like, that's like 5k, 52k, 5200, something like that, a whole stack of rubidite ore. 
compare that to if you refine it and try to sell the ingots. The ingots themselves are only worth about seven gold per ingot, but per ores, tw 25, 26 to 30 pieces. You can refine a whole stack of that yourself. You can get multiple. It all has to do with the arrows that you can get off of it. Yeah, all of the temp, all of the upgrade tempers. You can get multiple tempering alloy, which you can see is worth around 5k each. You can get grain solvent, uh, um, dwarven oil. I think was in honing stones. If you read, if you're just I think you cut out. And then you're going to want to sell just the raw ore itself. Because, that, because again, nobody's going to buy the ingots. <laughs> uh, yes, and Pep says prayers to Orange Jesus help too. <laughs> And you'll see similar returns off of um, drag wax and uh, what is the gold uh, rosin. I mean, you could sell all of the upgrading uh, tempers, so like all the drag wax, uh, elegant lining. Uh, embroidery, whatever the green one was again. You can sell all of those and make more than you would from just a stack of uh, raw ancestor silk. Or even uh, the Rubido leather pieces. But if you're not going to do that and, you, and your passives aren't high enough to do it in the first place, then you're going to want to stick with selling a full stack of the raw mat. Yep, if you refine jewelry dust, I mean, you can sell for different. Let me show you the difference between zircon platings and grains. A single zircon will be around 3,000, but if you find 10 of them, you're going to get close to 30k. That's about even, though. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have screenshots of, like, platinum. Um, let me see what I got in my craft bag real quick. Platinum ounces. We go for eight dollars. Do I? I don't have any dust at all. <laughs> Platinum is about seven point five k for the grains. Chromium. The, if you, you know, if you're just starting out, you're in, you know, you don't have a lot of gold to try to flip items, you don't have uh, different DLCs, you don't have access to dungeons, to farm gear, you don't have, you know, if you don't have all, all of this other stuff, what you can do instead is sell alchemy mats. Uh, Columbine. Uh, actually, let me pull those up because I got them. You got Columbine, you got Blessed Thistle, you have, um, whoops, that was, you got Beetle Scuttle. Let me, I got those. I, I got, I, I have my craft bag open. I'm just showing them that. You 
you know, those are the easiest things to access because they are literally everywhere. It doesn't matter what zone you're in. Um, starter zones you'll see more often just because everybody is farming there. And so uh, craft nodes, I mean, harvest nodes uh, respawn faster. Where are again? Beginner zones like oh, Betmeg okay. and Oridon. Craglorn also because everybody's there farming for Nern will respawn fast. What about the Our starting town? islands? Like those two? I haven't... I didn't farm in Bleak Rock a whole lot. Although I did notice that one of them... One node in particular did uh, respawn fast. But that node was also next to a way shrine and a trader. So go figure, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Pev says, Hollow City and Cold Harbor is awesome for fl uh, harps and flowers. All spots for flowers are in the city. One lap of the city can get 10 to 15 flowers. Uh, North Point, I think it was in Rivenspire. I did. I used to farm up there as well a while ago. I'd make a loop around the city, within the city itself, and then also if I felt like it, go outside the city, around the cliffs, and then just keep repeating that, and I would get by the time I was done and was getting back to where I started, and it wasn't just flowers, you know, it would be wood and all of those other mats, everything would have respawned again. Um, so, I mean, if you literally, if you're picking up everything, you can easily sell those items. And you can see Beetle Scuttle, which is an ingredient in Dubious Camorin, will go for almost 200 a pop. Blessed Thistle isn't quite as much, but it is used in a lot of different, um, uh, a lot of different potions. Columbine yeah. is another, uh, well... Yeah, Columbine's really good because it has the restore of the, all the three major ones. All, all the, yeah. yeah. Health magic stats. So it's going to be used in most, uh, potions. So for those that are starting out, alchemy is going to be the easiest thing for you to be able to get your hands on and to also sell. But, let's see. Uh, I have other items that I think I wanted to like compare to give people an idea of things they can sell. Um, so this is one that I don't really advocate, but people do it. They will buy items like bone or even like a tree from one of the vendors. So bone is worth, you can buy it from a vendor for 15, 15 gold, flat even. You can buy, say, a tree from a vendor for 500 gold. And then, because people don't know where I... They just go to a, a guild trader and, hey, somebody is selling this bone, which is a very common style, Matt, yeah. for 20 gold. Okay, and that tree deal. that I mentioned earlier, that they bought for... That maybe gold, I'm able to sell that for a thousand off a guild trader instead of the 500 from the vendor especially if it's from a vendor like in Somerset which everyone doesn't have access to so that's another thing that a lot of people do and then here are different um different motifs that are still worth a lot and then so we have the blood forge chest and also the style mat which both go for quite a bit still we have the apostle helmets which took a bit of a hit during the clockwork event but it's still not too bad the abaz watch helmets you get only in Hughesbane. Uh, Thieves Guild motifs are also another one that you only get there, and so those will go for quite a bit too. If 
ethereal dust is awesome. It's a very rare drop, and you get it from harvesting, which is another reason maybe you want to go spend a lot of time harvesting, um, you know, any kind of crafting map. And get harvest maps. <laughs> the add-on harvest map. I have only ever gotten one, but look at how much it's worth. Damn. I know. It makes, um, it, is it mythic? The Sigic Pot, Sigic Ambrosia, or Ethereal Sigic Ambrosia, something like that. Yeah, you, you take the, the the first one and then add this to it and then you make the mythic one. Yeah. yeah. So it's worth quite a lot. If you happen to be lucky, maybe you and Orange Jesus came to an arrangement. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not judging. <laughs> so if you get that you can either sell it for a lot or just hold on to it like I am um, so you can sell furniture you can sell uh, maps you can sell um, blueprints and you know different recipes you can also make armor for people Just loaded up a bunch of them because I wanted to compare stuff. That was a point. That's the whole reason why I um, I took some of these screenshots and then I didn't do anything about it. I mentioned uh, the Eleanor bench. This is something that's going to go sell for a lot because it's purple and it's a rare shop and also it costs a lot anyway. Okay. Uh, there are some items that oh I should look for it. There's some furniture that does that sells for less than uh, their um, uh, than their craft cost. Uh, I don't remember if that is one of them. That's about even. Oh well, we'll use that example. Some items sell for less than their craft cost, and so consequently, I am going to go pay for. I'd rather go buy that furniture because now that's my mat that's fast that I don't have to use. I can hold on to that. So you save money. Yeah, in the long run. Mm -hmm. Or even the short run. Because now I don't have to go out and buy mats if I didn't have it and find somebody, waste my time uh, trying to find somebody who will craft that item for me. I can just buy it because now, now I saved time. Oh, so I had taken screenshots of some recipes. So something uh, like this Bravo's beef, best beet risotto is the kind of recipe that uh, I saw listed on our store for like twenty-seven gold. And again, doesn't it doesn't get anybody anything? The guild doesn't get any gold from it. It's a very common. It actually drops a lot in crafting dailies. When you turn them in, which drove the price down considerably, because I remember a couple years ago this used to be worth closer to 200 gold, and then and now you have so that's not something that's worth um, selling on a guild store. Is my point. You're better off uh, selling that, just vendoring it. But you have this other green recipe, the Grilled Timber Mammoth Kebabs, which I don't even know where it drops, but apparently I know it. <laughs> it sells for almost 2,000 gold. And it's green. Yeah, and it's a green recipe, and it's for CP10. Because it's not common. It might come from a... Um, like the name makes me think of Rothgar, so maybe it drops there. Timber mammoths. I, I know there's a quest that has a bunch of them in that area. I want to say it's in Rothgar here. That yeah, that's what I think so too. says you can have a chance to get those if you don't have full points in the provision and passives or characters near the relevant level. We don't really have other blue 
address the previous. Apparently, it's a ship. As a comparison, but okay. So I, a linked wine, sweet and sour port. It's a drink. Yeah. Most people don't use drinks. For if they're you know, as their actual like build food. But this also isn't worth a whole. I mean, it's also not a comp because it's a lower level. And maybe the stuff that Pez said about provisioning passives and all that. And that, so it's worth 2k still around there. I don't see it a whole lot. I don't know how many of my tunes know it. Um, obviously the purple ones will normally go for more. It's a long and pasty recipe. I've seen uh, a purple recipe only go for 500 one time. Yes, but that's because it was a lower level, yeah. probably. It was like level 10 or something. Yeah, but like I had mentioned earlier, the more pu purple recipes you know, the greater your chance of getting provisioning master wins. Which is why it still sells for anything. Is it the same so to do with uh, the motifs too? The more motifs and yeah. the more recipes? Okay. The more full motifs, not individual pieces, but full books. So I know the full ebony motif. I also know, like, all of the great houses. I know those in their entirety. I formed the hell out of Vivek City for them. <laughs> um, so, like, the more full ones you know, the higher your chance of getting a master it. This longfin pasty sells for about 20k. Because, as I mentioned before, it's a, it's a cheap alternative for people to use for their builds rather than the dubious Camoran or the Citrus Filet. And you know what? It's actually held its price pretty well. It's, I mean, like my MM says currently 17k, but I have a couple sales that were really low and recently. But for the most part, it's around 20 to 25k most of my sales and it's been that way for a few years this particular recipe is popular and it doesn't you. drop that Ooh, often there's an invisible oops something popped up okay you can continue sorry um looking at what else i have so you want to sell different, um, oh, Alcahest, let me show you about this. Alcahest is something else that you wouldn't list on a guild trader because of, it's so common. It's only worth about three gold, even on a trader, but because of the, the listing fee, because of the tax is being taken out of it, you're going to be making closer to two gold on that, maybe. Two gold. Yep, have I'm getting there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so instead of listing those on the guild trader, you would just vendor those. Yeah. And the vendor price is the same that you'll sell it for on the guild trader, but you won't have any of those stupid taxes taken out of it. You're going to make what, like eight hundred or something. And you only get thirty guild slots, so. It'll... It, it'll be a waste to waste one of those slots, you know. Yeah, it would be a waste of a slot for your guild trader. For your guild trader. I mean, so you're making, you know, about 600 per stack of Alcahest off of selling if you just vendor it, but if you sell it to a guild trader, you're going to make me quite a bit less than that because of taxes and listing fee and all that. That's why it goes for three, three at, or three dollars at the trader and only two at the uh, vendor because they're trying to make up for it, right? It goes for two at the vendor, right? No, it goes for three at the vendor as oh. well. Oh, oh, okay. I thought it went for two. I thought it was only a little bit higher because they tried balancing it or whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean the other. Uh, Poison solvents would go for less, probably. Well, the they're going to go for less ones. in both locations. It all scales downward. So, 
let me post some other items that maybe you might want to sell. I mean, if you're doing stuff like trials and all of that, you have a chance of getting the different jewelry traits. I don't remember if Orbic, if Orbic Amber came from trials or if it came from Sigic portals. It might be Sigic portals. Yeah, I, I want to say that. I, I use this on my healer on my uh, for the jewelry. Yeah. But the full trait stone goes for 3k because you can actually get like little pieces oh I did have a, a, an example of a blue recipe a common blue recipe this is not something that I would bother selling on a vendor I mean selling on a trader the honest last seat honey tea it only sells for about 100 gold but I can either vendor it for 10 because I know I will get gold I know I'm going to get gold there. Or I could put it in a guild bank and let somebody who doesn't know it take it. So this isn't something that's worth saving. Worth trying to sell. I mean, uh, style pages. I don't know if you guys knew about this, but once a month, I think, or rather every month, uh, Zoss chooses a different dungeon that you can farm for outfit styles instead of having to get like the actual mask or whatever so you can farm the different uh, dungeons on vet hard mode to try to get the mask style page and recently i don't remember if i sort of stole the current one or if it's uh, last month but so the ice heart mask was going for between one and 200k I think it's going to be more like 300k when it first came out because it's a pain in the butt to have to farm that all the time. And then you can get the shoulders from the same place you get the regular shoulders, you know, from the daunted chests. Whichever chest it's supposed to drop in, you just use up your keys and try to find it there. Some people don't farm dungeons. Oh, or so, maybe they so don't. you can get the style pages from the pudge, pudge uh, chest? Yep. For that. that month, whatever it is that month, oh, you can get it. Okay. Yeah, because they don't ha they didn't release all of them all at once. And Ice Heart was a recent one. Troll King was another one that they've already done. So you can sell the shoulder style page for around eight or nine k, because people don't run pledges or don't want to run pledges, so they don't have the keys. So how else are they gonna get the shoulder page? Or they don't want to run vet hard mode, they can't. They don't have the manpower to pull it off, so they can't get the, the mask style page. So those will go for a lot as well. And then you have like other common motifs. And uh, Red Guard Chandelier. That blueprint goes for above 30k because it's light. It costs a lot, and everybody wants more and more light. Mm -hmm. And two, it's purple. And the more, like, I, there's an achievement. Uh, if you put so many lights in your house, you get an achievement for that. <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're an achievement hog, you can do stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like the great house uh, motifs. Are making a comeback. They did drop down last year at some point, selling for around 7k. But I noticed that they're back in the teens now, so I might go farm so I can sell those again. Because that is again only available and they don't drop anywhere else. In Fardenfell, I should say. Cornflower. I should have, yeah, cornflower. Let me go link that. That is uh, another mm. alchemy. 
me, Matt, that sells for a lot. It's in a lot of different potions. 210, 262. Yeah, my sales yeah. are 215 and up. Dawn Prism. That's something else that PVPers uh, can buy. They can buy either just the trait mat for a triune. Which actually the price has been coming down. It used to be 20k plus, or they can um, use it to craft uh, the um, the jewelry themselves to, of course, turn around and resell. Which does cost a little bit more than just selling the mat. And, and you sell these for uh, for people that need to be in researching researching that. 22k for that. Wow. Yeah. That's a pretty penny. <laughs> but, you know, if people, you got master crafters like me who want to know all of the stuff. So, I will pay for that. Or, you know, I'll pay for, um, yeah, the, ne uh, the ring actually goes for about the same price, so I didn't bother getting a screenshot of that. In this case, if you're the buyer, it would be cheaper for you to buy the stone and ask somebody to make it for you. But if you're selling it, maybe you would rather buy the stone and then make it and turn around and sell the pieces. Makes sense. I was surprised to discover that exemplary triune uh, pieces drop somewhere. The other exemplary pieces, um, exemplary in this case means you can only research yeah. these, uh, unfortunately. Those have all gone down for the other trades. They've gone down in price. There's, I think most of them are around 2k. Why is the price so different for the, uh, the pewter necklace versus the exemplary one, even though it has the same trait, like you can research it still, but it's... I would think it's because exemplary is a drop. It just dropped somewhere. They didn't have to put any effort into buying the stone or crafting it. Whereas the pewter one, that was something... Uh, th that was something that you had to craft yourself. And you probably paid for the stone, so... Yeah, like Pever is saying, there's a crafty markup. I had mentioned um, other food, but I forgot. I forgot to show these two. Oh, where did it go? So this recipe only drops during the Halloween festival, Double Bloody More. Currently, it's only worth about 1,500 gold because the market is still saturated with them. Yeah, because the event just literally just happened a couple months ago. Yeah, we just had an event. But uh, day one pricing, just before the event starts, you're going to be able to turn around and sell that for between 6 and 12k. Mm. The recipe. And that the food still goes for a lot. It actually goes for, I think, more than Dubious Gamora, maybe? Because, I mean, not only is it regular food, but it's also really helpful for vampires. I've been meaning to ask this for the double bloody. Uh, it says, if you're a vampire, the blood in the strength will also mildly state you. What does that mean exactly? It means if I drink that while I'm stage 4, I will become stage 3. Oh. Is that what happens when you feed too? Yep. Okay. So it's right. And that's important for some people because um, as you increase, you know, in the different vampire stages, the health penalty gets greater and greater as well as your um, 
a vulnerability to fire. And what your appearance, I'm assuming, probably built like you get uglier, whatever the higher. Your yeah, level. with every stage, your appearance changes, and I call stage four the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Dwemer Frames, um, that is, it's a style material, but it's also used in crafting Dwemer, well, Dwarven furniture, I should say. Uh, Dwarven repair. Oh, that's another. Yeah, let me, uh, let me also link that. Both of those are... 738 to 922. <laughs> That's what TTC says. But, yeah, that dormer yeah. frame. Because I have some low levels in Craglorn selling it for way too low. But it should have been on the higher end. And that's another thing. Like I talked before, you want to color code your graphs so that way you can see where you know which guilds are selling it where. For something like... Uh, let me go back and look for a better. So the pewter necklaces. Apparently, I mostly only had one guild selling that. And so that's what the green is. It's my FFX guild. They're selling those for 20k. But, I mean 23k. Actually, it looks like if we sold some in Craghorn, but not for a whole lot. Not for a whole lot lower, I should say. Cornflower, that would be a better example. I have a lot more sales to deal with and it's spread out a bit more. Uh, yeah, my Vivek guild. On that. A lot of dots. Yeah, my Vivek guild routinely gets better sales than any of my other guilds. It's a better location and sales just happen more often. So if I have higher ticket items, I'm going to list it in Vivek rather than Craglorn or Riften or, you, you know, somewhere out in the wild unless I have somebody running TTC to try to lure people there. But Dwarven, you know, this furnishing material, you know, it's very rare and the Dwarven furniture uses a lot. Um, like the Dwarven lights, you've seen those before. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what other furniture they have. It's mostly lights, I think. Those all require dwarven frames and dwarven whatever. So it's expensive to make, which is why I was saying that's something that you would be able to sell for a lot. Money, money, money. Yeah, it's all about money. <laughs> Like a lot of people say, that's the true end game of this game is making money. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. You know what you would be surprised uh, to see? Look at how much flour goes for. And look at the price disparity I have on my graph. Holy crap. I just reset my MM like on Friday. So this is all like very recent um, information. All the way up to two hundred dollars, well, all the way down to four. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and why do you think there is not only that price disparity, but also mainly why do you think that flour goes for as much as it does, it's, or has, I should say? It's probably used in a lot of different things that people need, but like. Also, like, I don't see it that often around. Like, like, um, you, like you see a flower thing. Like, that's another thing that gets me when it comes to harvesting. Like, take apples for example. Right, there'd be a, a basket of apples, and you harvest that, but you only get one apple. But there was like ten apples in the basket. It's like mind blown, kind of, you know. Well, it's what Pev just said. It's because it's used in furnishings oh. and candles. Not the green ones necessarily, but definitely blue. And, you know, uh, it's also used in food furnishings. How the hell does flower make candles? 
That is why flour. Yeah, for candles, you need freaking 20 flour to make one candle. Which, it's, it's like I mean, $2,000 if you pay 200 for each flower. And if we're talking about some surprising runes, look at this, Rakepa. Yeah. It's not used just to make uh, fire glyphs for weapons. Yeah. It's also used to make candles and enchanted lights. Which is why it goes for over 200 gold per piece and so like that's the thing you really need to be aware of it's not only just knowing I mean it's not enough to just have an idea of what kinds of things you want to sell you want to know why people are selling wanting to buy these items because rocket power you wouldn't think is worth a whole lot uh, because a lot of the other runes aren't mostly worth a lot unless it's the tempers like kuda but rocket power is used in uh, candles and so that is something that's going to sell for a lot whereas all the other um, like Denny I think would go for maybe what 20 gold pieces Denima Dema? Yeah. Denny? Oh. I actually have some glyphs that I wanted to show you and I'll explain why people are paying what they are for them as soon as I can find it in my... I, I, I should have put Glyph in front of the name and I did not, so right now I can't find it. Bellum. I don't remember where that comes from, but that still goes for quite a bit, too. It says I have 2.2% drop frames. I'm wondering if that's affecting the audio. Hold on real quick. I'm going to test this real quick. Dungeons, okay. Is that these ones are made from the Rakapa, right? Yeah, so the two glyphs that I just linked, um, they're both flame glyphs, obviously, so they use the Rakapa. Now the difference, the gold one is obviously worth 4k because it's made with CUDA. Yeah. But are you a little bit surprised to see that you can even sell the white ones for any amount of gold? Yeah, but it's still under the uh, amount how much rock plus actually costs, or craft costs is higher. Yeah, but the... But the well, fact that it's white... Craft, <laughs> most, most of the time if it's in white, it's a drop. And the reason why people are paying on your gold for something that drops very commonly, I might add, is because of what a pain in the butt it is to a level enchanting. People will buy gold, um, white glyphs to help level uh, their enchanting, so at least they get one to, to 50, and then they would craft more for their alts themselves. But if you sell, I mean, you can't stack them on the trader. But if you were at an auction, say, you could buy, you know, a stack of 50 of the, even just these white ones to level, or green ones. Sometimes, like the Ritz, if you do Ritz, you'll get them in green instead. Uh, you can, people will spend quite a bit of money on freaking low level, well, low quality glyphs like this just to level their enchanting.
Ooh, here's something that I have stolen a few times before, and so it actually goes for quite a bit. I think that's that's one of the ones I need. <laughs> yeah, there's nowhere to buy this particular motif. So you have it's, to steal it? You, or You have to it? either steal it or... Um, uh, be able to buy it from a trader. I mean, you see that I, my guild in Craghorn sold it for a mere 45k last week, but normally it's between 60 and 100k, and I've that's where I sell it. Uh, I've sold them a few times, I've stolen a few of them before, and they just drop anywhere. Uh, something like this, I've noticed, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but it's in nicer locations like banks or castles I don't know if that's a coincidence or if that's how much that's really only the place it drops I don't know I definitely need I'm... to start thiefing more <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you don't even have to be like a master thief either because the first time I stole it I was on I, I don't think she even hit 50 yet and she certainly her thieving wasn't anywhere what my main is it was one of my alts but yeah i mentioned hakejo earlier 11 and you can see yeah between 11 and 14k usually uh, 10 and 14k because that doesn't just drop anywhere that's from imperial city although i think i got one in citra grift recently so that was cool It's only in the city, in the sewers too, or just yeah, the sewers. You can, um, you can, yeah. So like Pev said, you can buy them with with Telvar, or it will drop from. Uh, I think it's the treasure scamps. There are two different kinds of special scamps down there yeah. that you can kill. One of them will give you Hakejo. I don't remember what the other gives you. Maybe it's the pet. The scamps are the ones like there's there's the fake chests, right? And then like you go to open them and they come out, right? Well no, not those scamps. Like these are specific special scamps. They glow. Oh oh oh, oh yeah. I, I, yeah, I the remember. glowy scamps yeah. that you drop everything that you're doing and kill them before they get away. Yeah, because they only open there a portal. For a second. And Earlier we had eight viewers at one point, <laughs> but we've been averaging out about five. Hmm, not bad. Uh, don't think I really have anything else to go over. My um, I had written notes down in WordPad, but it froze and I can't scroll down. So I have to hope that I went over everything that I wanted to go over. <laughs> I, well, I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad, especially since I thought you were well versed in it anyhow, because I know you're another trading guild. Yeah. Well, like I do know some stuff, but like, it, it's always good to learn more, you know. Especially since uh -huh. there, there was like gaps that I didn't know, like you know, like I knew a lot of it. It's just there was some gaps in my memory and my, my knowledge uh, you kind of like filled it in you know there's some lex furniture guilds have reason so the add-on that i'm using it tells me not only how much it originally sold for i mean it will also tell me how for which helps me judge how good a deal I'm getting if I decide to buy it after the fact. So like the blue crystal fragments were, it says 81.25, but I think that was actually 2017's price. I think last year was probably, oh, they probably I, brought it down to 8,000. Are these the same things that we bought for the guild house? Yep. Uh, they're currently selling, as you can see, for 15K, the crystal fragments. 
And because these have been out food. for a few years, um, they don't you don't make as big a profit on it if you resell it. But you can see that you are in fact making a profit. Yeah. If you feel like flipping them. This apparent this Fisher's that. cat apparently was a huge profit for somebody. They must have been desperate, definite, desperately wanted that piece. They sold it. They're able to sell it for three times the original price. Damn. I wonder how long they had it up on their slot for before someone bought it. Then, yeah, that's something else to consider too. If you list something too high and it's not selling, well, I mean, that's your problem because you listed it too high. You're not doing anyone any good. Which is another reason why you want to ask around, ask for price checks with people, check TTC to figure out what the average is, that way you can price things more appropriately. Because the faster you sell without undercutting people, you know, the more profitable that you and your guild will be. Because that frees up another slot for you to put something else up. Yeah, and you only get 30. Yeah. Um, but look at this gazebo, which was a recent item. They made 10k profit off of that. I remember actually and that was I a bought new that. Item. Yeah, I bought it for 20k that weekend. I'm not buying something like this from a trader. But this was a new item. Those, those other items, the fishes rack and the crystals, those are things that have been in the game for a while. You know, they were sold last year, and they were sold when Homestead first came out. Which is why you're not making as big a profit on them when you resell it. So that's something else you need to consider, too. Is it an item that's been around a while, or is this a, a new addition? Like, when you go to buy them, does it say that, or...? I or... have an add-on um, furniture catalog, because I craft a lot of furniture. I know something like 800 blueprints. So, built into that add-on, she also tells us where, as you can see, was sold by, you know, for this much on this date. She updates that every week with the new Lux furniture. Now, it's less helpful for the items that come back every year, like the, the crystals and the catcher's rack, of the fish's rack, because she will update it with the new date. But, I mean, that's just something that you will probably be aware of because you'll see it in other people's homes, you know? Oh, this has been sold before. Maybe don't want to buy it to be sell. Might not be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I... I think I've uh, shared everything that I was planning on. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to know? Hey, whoa. Hello. What? I didn't even know you were in here. Yes, I know. That's why I was, I was trying to be sneaky. Well, this is being streamed, if you didn't know. This was like an actual like trading class, and it's being streamed. So do you have any trading-related questions? Oh, uh, sure, I do. Um... So how do you know, uh, on your TTC, how do you know when to underbid or a bid as close as what TTC? Well, I don't use TTC, but, uh, so when I use, well, I don't use it for selling. As a buyer, though, I go to the TTC website, and, I mean, obviously I go buy whatever the lowest prices I can find, but on the rare chance that nobody had a, had a price check on an item and I don't have a price on it, then I'll go to TTC. I'll look at what like the average is. If I see a lot of really high price, but um, and then there are some stragglers down at the bottom, I'll probably lean more towards the higher listings and put um, I'll list my item for somewhere in the middle of there. Uh, or, you know, if it's vice versa, or if there's a if, you know, if TTC shows a lot of lower value listings for that particular item, um, but there are a few high ones, I'm not going to get greedy and list it for high because I'm probably not going to sell it for that price. Yeah. And that's also why it's good to have both TTC and uh, Master Breaker so you can 
more or less like make a decision like e even though like technically if you have more info like sometimes it's harder to make a decision but you know okay uh, thank you for listening or watching I hope you in hope you enjoyed this yourselves I hope you learned a lot and I hope you're able to make yourself a lot of gold that way and I hope I can see you back up on the stream again too <laughs> <laughs> all right bye Alright, bye. <laughs> Take it easy. All right. Well, I hope you guys learned something. And, well, it's about dinner time for me, so I'm gonna get heading off. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the follow button and you can subscribe. Uh, this, for our guild members, this will be recorded and uh, we'll most likely end up putting it on YouTube. Um, we'll put the link up in the. Uh, announcements or general or something once we get that done so everyone take care and i'll be back at some point peace